Hey guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at another Android tablet, and this one's known as the Tay Class or T Class M16. I'm just going to be referring to it as the M16. What we have here is a 10 core, 11.6 inch Android powered tablet, and it's actually running Android 8.1. Unfortunately, Android 8.1 is pretty old as of 2020, but we do get Google Play pre installed. And it works decently. Now this is going for about 199 US dollars, but I have seen it on sale for 160. One thing I want to point out are the pictures you're going to see when you're going to purchase one of these. So if we take a look at these, you'll notice that the bezels are a lot smaller in these pictures. But when you get it out of the box, you'll notice that it's a chunky boy. I mean, it's really not that bad, but for 2020 and the price you're paying, they should be a bit thinner. There's definitely a little photoshopping going on with those promotional pictures. The M16 does support a detachable keyboard. I don't have one to test here, but I'm sure it works pretty decently. We also get dual stereo speakers up top here in the grill, and it sounds pretty good. Standard power button and volume rocker. One thing that I really like about this tablet is HDMI out. Given it's a micro HDMI port, but it does look great on a big screen TV. It'll only do 1080p out, but that's really all you need with a tablet like this and the unit can be charged or synced using USB Type-C. It does have an 11.6 inch IPS screen, but unfortunately it's a non-laminated display, so viewing angles aren't great like some of the real laminated displays out there. There's about a one millimeter gap between the touch panel and the display itself, and it is pretty noticeable even looking at it head on. So as specs go, for the CPU we have the MediaTek MT6797X. This is also known as the X27. It's a 10 core CPU, Two A72 cores at 2.6 gigahertz, four A53 cores at 2 gigahertz, and four more A53 cores at 1.6 for efficiency. The GPU is the Mali TA80 MP4, four gigabytes of RAM, 11.6 inch IPS non-laminated display at 1920 by 1080, and it's sitting at a 16.9 aspect ratio. 128 gigabytes of internal storage, plus you can add a micro SD card up to 128 gigabytes. 802.11b GN and AC Wi-Fi, so you can pick up that five gigahertz network. Bluetooth 4.2. USB Type-C for charging and sync, micro HDMI out, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, eight megapixel rear camera, 2.1 megapixel front, and it's running Android 8.1. As for battery life, eight to nine hours mixed use. It's got a built-in 7,500 milliamp hour battery, but unfortunately it does not support quick charge. Charging this thing up takes absolutely forever. I had it plugged in for seven hours yesterday just to get it up to 100% from around 25. Overall, the UI is pretty smooth here with the chip. It's running Android 8.1. I did check for updates, but you never know if you're going to get an update from a company like this. Loading up Netflix is super fast. It's got that AC Wi-Fi built in, and I did run a test. You'll see that in a bit. So as for video playback, web browsing, and even email checking, this tablet works out just fine. We'll head over to YouTube and check out a 1080p video. As you can see, it loads up pretty quickly. We'll go full screen with it and make sure we're at 1080p here. So video streaming on this device is going to be perfectly fine, whether you want to use Amazon Prime, Hulu, Netflix, YouTube, or any of your other favorite app, as long as it's compatible with this version of Android should stream just fine as long as you have a decent internet connection. There is one thing bugging me about this screen though. It's not just the glare, but when I go into IDA64 and I check out display, it's telling me that it's running at 53 hertz. Now I'm not completely sure if IDA64 is correct with this, but the screen just doesn't look as smooth as some other tablets that I've tested with true 60 hertz displays. I did run a quick Wi-Fi test and I'm connected to my five gigahertz network, 200 down, 23 up, Perfectly fine for a tablet like this. So now it's time to get into a couple benchmarks. On the right hand side, I have the new 2019 Fire 10 tablet. These are $149 and they go on sale for $99 all the time. And on the left hand side, we have the M16. You might notice that the Fire 10 screen looks a lot better than the M16. And I do have the brightness up all the way on the M16. So this is the Geekbench 4 benchmark. On the M16, single core, 1732. Multi-core, 4177. Over on the Fire 10, single core, 1,402, 
Multi-core, 5,203. I actually wasn't expecting this. I figured the M16 would beat this tablet out pretty bad, and it did in single-core performance. But when it comes to multi-core, the cheaper tablet wins this round. Next up, 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme. On the OpenGL test, the M16 scored a 1,071. Vulcan, 1,137. The Fire 10 did beat it out in OpenGL performance, but lost in Vulcan. But overall, these are right on par with each other. And finally, for the benchmarking section, we have Antutu. This is version 8. On the M16, total score, 123,211. Unfortunately, the newer version of Antutu kept crashing on my Fire 10, but I was able to run it in my review video. And the overall score was a bit lower at 121,516, but the Fire 10 did beat out the M16 and the GPU test by quite a bit. Moving over to some gaming performance on the M16, here we have Asphalt Extreme. Unfortunately, I couldn't get Asphalt 9 from the Play Store, it just wasn't listed with this version of Android we're running. When it comes to these easier to run touch-based mobile games, the M16 is perfectly fine, but when we move over to something a little higher in, like Call of Duty Mobile, we get a bit of lag. Now personally, I've seen a lot worse on lower end tablets. I do have the graphics set to low and the frame rate set to low, but one of the biggest issues I'm having here is the touch screen itself. It's just really hard to navigate on this giant touch screen, but I don't have this issue on higher end tablets like the Galaxy Tab S4, the S5e, or even the S6. Now I completely understand that all three tablets I just mentioned blow this thing out of the water, but even on lower end tablets like the Fire 10, I haven't had this issue with the touch screen. It's just really hard to control, and I spent about 10 minutes trying to get the sensitivity right. So if you want to play something like this, you'd be better off using a controller. And this low sensitivity issue that I'm having with the screen here transfers over to other games. Like PUBG. I have this set to low and it's really not running that bad, but when you get into tight spaces it's really hard to navigate with this touch screen. And finally, for my gaming test, we have Minecraft. It's not as smooth as I was hoping it would be. Keep in mind, I tested these games consecutively, so this thing is getting a bit hot on the back with that 2.6 GHz CPU, so we could be running into some thermal throttling here with Minecraft. But I didn't want to let it cool down because I wanted to check out how extended gameplay worked out, and as you can see, Minecraft is a bit laggy when this thing's heated up. I also wanted to get a little emulation in here. This is PPSSPP running Tekken Dark Resurrection, not super hard game to run. 1x resolution using an Xbox One Bluetooth controller, but we're not at full speed. I've tried OpenGL and Vulkan, it seems to run better with OpenGL here. I was actually expecting this tablet to run this particular game at around 2x to even 3x resolution, but even at 1, we got some lag going on. Next up, some Dreamcast using ReDream. This is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. 640 by 480, the lowest resolution we can go. Seems to be running pretty decent. But if I tag in another character or there's lots of particles on screen, it slows down tremendously. You get a lot of lag coming in. And this is at the lowest resolution. There's really nothing else I can do to make this run better. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is an easier game to run with the Redream emulator, so let's move over to Dead or Alive 2. Six forty by four eighty, and we're around forty three to forty five FPS. Just to give you a look here, the internal resolution is set at six forty by four eighty. So there's nothing else I can do to make this game run any better. So in the end, it's really hard for me to recommend this M16 tablet for pretty much anybody. Um, there are better tablets out there for cheaper. Unfortunately, this MediaTek X27 CPU just isn't up to par for native Android gaming or even emulation. 
It does work great for video playback, web browsing, email viewing, and things like that. But if you're buying a $200 Android tablet, you should be able to play some 3D games on it pretty well, and this thing just isn't up to par. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.